be asking all the questions. Uh huh. I mean, I'm 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 good at talking. I'm good at freestyling. So. Yeah, we're Let's on see. it, man. All right. We got we got the special one today. The producer room powered by producer culture. I was on a hot streak right now. My guy, Palace. Uh-huh. Palace, what you cooking? What's Jordan, up, man? Joiner Lucas and J. Cole, young boy, all on the same day. Both had videos, both standout tracks. You've been going crazy. What's going on? What's going on, man? Happy to be here, man. Yeah. And thanks for the opportunity, of course. Of course. It's, it's overdue. We've been talking about, about it for a minute. The other cool thing that I'm really excited about this one, too, is a lot of the producer room fan base, a lot of people commenting, you know, whenever we post who should be the next interview, whenever we post this or that, there's a ton of support from overseas producers. Um, And we've had some really, really, really cool interviews up until this point, but we haven't had an overseas producer yet. Everybody we've we've done has been uh, has been anchored in the States. So. I'm excited to do this one because I feel like there's a ton of gems you can give all of those guys who are trying to make it sure. happen. And there's a there's a lot of overseas producers to, to for me to like talk to and just in general, a lot of people that are in the same situation as me, you know, just not being like over there and just like being a part of it, but still just like being on the grind back home, just like, you know, everybody got different situations, but it's like, the process is kind of the same right so yeah yeah it's it's been it's been incredible to just watch your your come up since me and you linked and started working in those in those early early days um oh yeah yeah we, yeah, we go way back way back yeah. way back but yeah let's start it from the beginning so tell everybody you know where you're located at how you first started and how you how you built it up to get to this point Oh, shit. Uh, uh, it's been a, like, I wouldn't say it's been a while, but it's, I feel like it's been a while. But, you know, I'm, I'm from Denmark. Uh, I started, I feel like I started like probably like three years ago. It's probably more than that. But yeah, as long as I remember like doing it and like being good at what I do for like probably like three years. And, uh, you know, I feel like I started off like the same way as everybody else did, just like uh seeing these guys on youtube making beats and just like going to fl studio cracking it you know and just like starting having fun with it and just like uh going on from there just like practicing my skill and just getting better and you know i feel like everybody started out making beats kind of the same way uh you know not a lot of producers today are like you know good musicians or like been to music school i feel like it's more like the older like veterans in the industry like you know the mike deans and like those type of people uh but i feel like the young producers especially like the new wave just like people computer nerds like just me like sitting at home and just like yeah just starting off with nothing and just like practicing so yeah that's kind of what I, I what i did and it just started off with nothing and now now here we are like <laughs> No, you're definitely here now. And there's countless plaques, billboard charting songs, part of number one albums, the whole thing. And we're definitely going to get to there. But I think it's sure. it's really cool and special how you spoke to, you know, the, the process being the same, despite, you know, where you're geographically located at. And I do feel like there's a lot of overseas producers who put in that double the work and really make it happen. I also yeah. feel like there, there are probably some that, you know, use where they're at as as a disadvantage or kind of make excuses about it but the fact of the matter is you've worked with really yeah, yeah there is an excuse, right so yeah i mean of course you're like you have a bigger advantage being over there and like being in sessions with like the different artists but i mean and of course you got to get lucky too i got lucky as well it's not, it like you can't just like grind your way to the top i mean you can but you got to get lucky sometimes as well but when you get lucky you got to like take advantage and from there you got to work hard so that's what i did i I saw the opportunity to like use it and then i worked so hard and i I didn't stop and now i can like more rely on my connections rather than like i'm not saying i'm not working hard but i'm not like forced to work as hard as i was because 
my hard work rewarded me to put me in the situation where I am now. So a hundred percent. Yeah. Just, just speaking on that, you've been able to build some, some incredible connections and been a part of some really, really, really huge songs, albums, moments over the past year or two. Um, like you said, it's, it's definitely not an advantage being overseas, you know, you know, you even kind of hinted at like being in the yeah. state might be a little easier because you can be in sessions with this producer, that artist. But the fact of the matter is you've actually never been in a session with any, you know, any producer yeah. artist that you have a placement with. So you're living proof that you can you can really make it happen without it. Yeah, and there's a lot of other people like OC Music as well, like mm -hmm. people that never been. I, I didn't know. I thought he was actually over there until like my 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 friend Woodpecker told me that he's like he's never been there. So it's just about man, just uh, grind and making good music. And when you have the connections, like if you can get the beats to the artists, they don't give a fuck about where you're from. Like if they hear a fire beat, the beat is fire. So the music speaks for itself, right? So. It's just about like, yeah, just keeping your head up and just like, because every, everybody's situation is different. So you can't really like exclude you from being like successful just because you're overseas. So you got to just figure out a way to get there, right? Right. And I, I think I, I couldn't agree with you more. The music is definitely what speaks for itself. You can, I think it's just all about getting yourself in positions to get your music, your beats, whatever heard. And then, like you said, it speaks for itself. So if if you can get the job done once once it's heard, the rest is on you as a producer and exactly. uh, being good enough. Uh, yeah. You know, if, if this producer's in the studio with that artist and he still likes this beat better from the beat on YouTube or whatever. Yeah, he don't, he don't give a fuck. Like, he's going to go, yeah. he's just going to take that beat, right? So I've, I've been in studios with, like, Danish artists as well, like, way back. But they did they used to do that as well. Like, the, while I was in a session, they had this crazy beat on YouTube. They'd just go on YouTube and tell me, can you get this beat? And I was like, well, all right. But so they don't really care. Like, if they have a fire beat, they don't care who it is because they don't really know, to be honest. Like, only the, like, real in tune, like, artists, I feel like they know the producers. But a lot of, like, artists don't really know, like, who the producers are and, like, the the people that produce their tracks like so yeah a lot of the times a lot of the times i think that's ultimately true uh yeah. but yeah st staying kind of in that realm speaking to youtube um that's that's really where it kind of started off for you right like you started yeah, it was, yeah. else on youtube um, it started everything. yeah sp speak to that a little bit just like those early youtube days when you were just uploading on youtube do you even remember who the first person that was that used the beat of yours that just ripped it right off of YouTube and then it ended up being your first song? I mean, the crazy thing is like so many songs uh, that I have out is because of YouTube. And it's literally like almost every song and both Pop Smoke songs are actually from YouTube. And that's what people, I, people feel like, okay, I, he had two songs on Pop Smoke album. He must've like been close with Pop Smoke. Like, I didn't I didn't know I had two songs with him until after he died. So I didn't know shit, right? So I, I just remember sending the one of the beats, like uh, the stems to AP and like the Enjoy Yourself track. He got that from YouTube. So like really any any type of artist and any kind of, kind of like size, really, I feel like most of them are on YouTube, actually. So everything started on YouTube and just like one beat blew up. And then from there, I just like started grinding, right? So since then all my songs really been from youtube so i just been so persistent and like staying true to it because it, it brought me so much so i couldn't I, I i wanted to stop a lot like a lot of times because it was like so stressful but then i just look back at it on it and like remember what like chances and like songs it gave me so i just like i couldn't take it for granted that i i still upload to this day and like i'm, I'm gonna try and keep doing it as much as i can but yeah yeah what are your thoughts on that because i hear all the time as soon as somebody has a really big song or a big moment or they lock in with an artist or whatever they shy away from youtube and kind of stop doing the youtube thing yeah you i mean people are like a lot about you got to remain exclusive and just mm -hmm. like yeah they always uh, say that. But that that's that's just so dumb because it's like uh 
I, I don't really know what to say, but it's just like if, if a, again, if an artist here, a fire beat, he's not going to be like, oh, it's this guy on YouTube, then I'm not going to use his beat. So it's just like there's so much money to be made. Like I can make one beat every second day and like upload it to YouTube. And every year I can make like five years worth of bills for, from just like making a beat for YouTube every second day. So it's just like, why would I, why would I push that money aside just to like, you know, because uh, YouTube is more uh, is more about money for me, and like the industry is more like, you know, being like an artist and like trying new stuff. But YouTube is really just like a side hustle, right? So if you can get there and like be both in the industry and be on YouTube, I I don't see why you should like stop that because it's like such a great opportunity. You shouldn't take that for granted at all. Right. That um that that youtube money is definitely solid once you start getting it going yeah, like, yeah. and i don't even make that much anymore because like my youtube channel is pretty much dead but i still make a lot so but for these upcoming like uh youtube producers that i like, had beats blowing up and have like millions of views you just keep going man they make so much money i can't i, I remember like way back they make so much money so it, it's really it's really crazy how much money there is to be made like on youtube there, yeah, there's a ton of money to be made on YouTube and people people overlook YouTube a lot when it comes to either YouTube money from a tight beat or YouTube money from a video or YouTube money from, you know, yeah, YouTube video as well, yeah. yeah, it's insane. And especially the biggest difference YouTube wise as well is, you know, somebody might do a Google research and say like, okay, Apple Music, a million streams gets you this, Spotify gets you this and YouTube gets you that. And they might see that YouTube's the smallest, but yeah. The thing is, you can have one song in 10,000 vi different videos on YouTube. And if yeah. all videos do 10 views a day, that's 100,000 passive views right there. And there's a lot of money that can come in. Like you yeah, said, exactly. like you said, uh, one beat or whatever can end up paying your bills for however long once it starts going. Exactly. So it's just like, and you don't know who uses it, but I mean, you guys in the portal is like such a great idea and you can like keep track of everything right so i mean if you upload one beat and doesn't like doesn't even have to have many views on like your channel but if just some random guy uses it then yeah so you never know it's a great outlet and it's a great uh way to like i feel like if anybody's like demotivated and to like upload i feel like just it's not everybody that blows up on youtube but i mean everybody should push and try to to get there because if you really do get there, then yeah, it's 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 great money and it's it's a great foundation for both placements and just living off of music in general. Right. And you you definitely spoke to catching some really big placements just off of having beats on YouTube. You know, you've had pop smoke as well as a bunch of artists that we're gonna get into. Um yeah. what about when it came to you and like building up your YouTube channel? Was there anything that you specifically try to do you know there's there's kids there now looking at their channels with 200 subscribers trying to figure out what was some of the things that you did to really start you know amassing views building your subscriber base and everything like that yeah uh i remember just in at this like way back i, I probably uploaded like one beat every second week or like and i wasn't really like in tune with like the whole youtube thing and like thumbnails and know just what was working and what wasn't and i remember just one day doing one kodak black type beat and it just went crazy and then from there i was like okay i'm gonna just make another one and i'm gonna make another one and i i had like kind of kind of a specific sound in those type of beats i wasn't really original back then mm -hmm. but then I, I started like uh building and like developing my sound uh while i was doing the kodak black tap beat so it came kind of like a niche i know you spoke to ferno about that he was talking about like niche and niche is like really important in music and just in general as a business you should see yourself as a business not really a musician but in general as a business a niche could like it, it sets you apart right so that's what you you want to do on youtube because it's basically a business you shouldn't really see yourself as a musician on YouTube. Like you should, but you're selling a product, right? So, you, so get into somewhere where nobody else really is, but you're still like, uh, what do you call it? Consumer friendly. So that's what I kind of did. Like, I feel like I made beats that 
anybody could rap on, which, yeah, clearly showed. Uh, and then like being simple and just like, but then again, being original, just a lot of a lot of that stuff, just building to becoming something of your own, right? Because a lot of producers do too much most of the time, like too complex, and they forget that a rapper actually has to rap on the beat. So just like this beat is so dope, there's but there's so much going on. A rapper killing can't really rap there, right? So building something original and just not trying to like stick out too much, but then again, try to stick out just a little bit. A hundred percent. I think that that's a super, super important thing that you mentioned as well, which is like sometimes people do have these crazy beats, but you, you lose track of can a rapper actually rap on this or not if they can't. You know, it might be better to put that in like a beat competition or something. Yeah, exactly. That's what happened a lot of times uh, with loop bank makers as well. I begin some loops in my mail where I'm like, OK, it's dope, but I can never hear a rapper on this ever. Like unless it's like some. Yeah, I can't even tell. But just like, you know, so I feel like that's what uh, kind of set me apart. And just like other big people on YouTube is that they found out it's really not about what sounds the coolest or what's most impressive is is about what sells the most because it's a product right you're you're running a business so that's what i figured and it helped me a lot insane yeah there's been a lot of really really cool moments early on you know it seems like your success on youtube from your own channel you know translated into placements pretty quickly i'm sure it was a longer grind for you but you know, for me and, you know, other producers uh, outside of yourself, looking at it from the outside in, um, it definitely looked like you were moving on YouTube and then it became placements pretty quickly. Um, it was, it was, yeah. Yeah, it some was, of those was. early ones, you know, a lot of the early J.I. stuff, you know, you actually produced, which was part of him, you know, really, really breaking and and rising back in, in mid, late 2019. Yeah. Um, what was it like kind of working with him? Like those replacements that came right off of YouTube? Yeah, it was. And like, he was so cool. I remember it was like when he had like 100,000 followers and he hit me up and I was like, who's this guy? And he made it like, he made like, I made, I sampled like Hate It or Love It. Mm -hmm. And I did a YouTube beat, he did like a remix with that. And I was like, okay, that's cool. But then he, then he uh, did like this song called uh, Only Shit and Company Part Two. And that was when he really blew up. Uh, then I've, I've, I've kept in touch with him, but yeah, he kind of went Hollywood on me a little bit, <laughs> uh, but I mean, he's, he's a cool guy and just, that was, that was when it really started. Yeah. Like, yeah. Shout out, shout out J.I. Shout out to G. Yeah, he's cool. He's cool, man. I, I'm just fucking with him. He didn't win Hollywood on me, but, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I mean, of course he, uh, he became very successful and, so he can't really keep in touch with anyone that's in any way, everybody. So that's, yeah, that's understandable, but yeah, yeah we still keep in touch every, every once in a while. And I think it's important for you to, uh, to even hear, you know, someone like Palas speak to that because I feel like there's definitely a lot of producers who, you know, build with an artist for a couple of months or a moment in time. And then when the artist gets big, they kind of lose touch. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. You know, it is what it is. And it's natural, of course life goes on right so yeah and it's so hard feelings he's not like talking shit about me i couldn't imagine that he's just like he moved on and he went like so it's natural it's, That's yeah life, right so it's just it's just part of the natural progression and everyone should just take it as motivation to start building with the with the next guy um you know because you never know what might happen right after exactly. right after that ji stuff um the Enelie Chopper placement you and Cook Up had together. Shout out my man Cook Up too. Cook Up's been yeah, going crazy goat. lately. Yeah, he's the goat. He, yeah. he, he doesn't he never sends me shit anymore, but whenever he does, Cook Up, what's going on? Oh, oh shit. Yeah, come on, man. He's slagging. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, Cook Up, you gotta get back to it. No, Cook Up's been going crazy though. He's been having uh a lot of really he's had, big he's had a great year. He's had a great year too. Cook Up's had a really great year. That um, I think people overlook how huge. The, having the no cap placement was when he first got home that was crazy it was top five trending on youtube for weeks and weeks um yeah. but yeah you and cook up had a had a really you know big placement with with choppa um you know in those early days as well 
Um, yep. I know there's kind of like a crazy story to, to the exotic song. How, how did that all come about? Yeah, it was just like, uh, actually on, on YouTube, it was a Sway Lee type beat. And uh-huh. it was called Exotic, the, the beat on YouTube. And I just I just remember that it, it's one of the craziest beats I ever made. And I like I still talk to Cook Up about like to this day about like I random pop up in his DM and like uh, shoot him a, a lyric from Exotic. And he's like, <laughs> he has it, like, a lyric, which is like, but it's just like that beat is so special and just like. I remember seeing the snippet and I was like so hyped. And then all of a sudden, like the video got leaked and, and the song dropped like out of the blue. And yeah, that was why, like my, my first really big song. Cause I know it wasn't like a gold single or like, but it still did pretty well at the time for, you know, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm proud of for sure. Yeah, no, it was crazy. Um, But yeah. And then, you know, 2020, the world shuts down, coronavirus happens. Um, and that's, that's when you really started to get into it. Uh, you, you spoke a bit earlier about, you know, using YouTube and that being kind of how a lot of those pop smoke placements happened. Um, but what was just that process like being on, you know, such a legendary pop smoke album and having for the night, which was urban radio, number one, um, you know, being with, little baby and a baby on there um you know working alongside ap and some other guys you know what what was that whole like, whole process like it all happened so fast right so i just remember we was on lockdown and i was with my with my ex-girlfriend and we was just like i was sitting in my apartment and i wasn't like back then i only had the end of the chopper song mm-hmm. so yeah i was kind of like new to this and i saw that this guy I, I didn't really know about his music that well actually before he died pop smoke i had heard some songs but i just saw he died and like he was everybody was going crazy and i was like yo that's crazy because like i heard when and heard here is heard his music and it was like he was really telling it and then uh i just remember this uh, lucy g who's in uh, who's in cash gang as well told me like a week after that uh, I didn't, he didn't know if I, I knew, but we had a song with Pop Smoke where he was in the studio. And uh, before all of this, I had sent the beat for, for the night to AP because he was going to a session with Pop Smoke like half a year back and I sent him the stems. And I never heard, that was before I was with Cash Gang. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, and I, I didn't hear anything from him like until half a year later, like, after he died and he told me, you remember that beat you sent me like half a year ago? We got Lil Baby and the baby on it. And I was like, okay. And that was that was when I was really like, okay, shit. And then yeah, rest is history, like for the night. I didn't, I never thought it would go that crazy, but it's like at 750 million streams on Spotify. And like, and it's just such a legendary album. Cause it's like in my opinion, like one of the best albums, hip hop albums I've ever heard. Like, and everybody, all of my friends, everybody, people I don't know, like everybody listens to it. And it's like, there's not a single song that you really want to skip. And it's like, it's for everybody. Everybody can listen to it. Like even my parents listen to it. And it's not cause they like a fan of me. There's like, they like the music. So it's like one of the most legendary albums like ever in my opinion. It's a, yeah, it's an insanely legendary album. And I feel like, um you know the artists teams or labels a lot of times with those posthumous albums um you know can go do, wrong yeah they can go wrong a lot of the time yeah, yeah. that that was really, it, it's, really it's, yeah it's a perfect album in my opinion it's it's yeah it's perfect yeah it really they, they killed it on that um yeah. they killed it on that but yeah you spoke to um you know, you spoke to, you know, working through that with AP, that being kind of before you officially joined Cash Gang. Since then, you've, you've obviously joined joined uh, Cash Gang. What's 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 it like being a part of that collective and working side by side with AP? It's great, man. AP is such a great guy. And I know he get, he gets a lot of shit from some unfortunate situations, but he's like he's the most genuine dude in the industry. Like and there's not really much to say he's just like he's so genuine he does everything that whenever you ask him something I know he's got a lot of producers like signed to him and he must like have a lot between you know his hands but he never like 
seems like irritated when I ask him anything or like he's always there to help and he's just like he's so genuine and he's like he 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 does everything for you and try to get the best deals and just like yeah and yeah he 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 does everything for you really he's he's such a great guy and he's done a lot for me since I got there so a hundred percent and I also think too you know AP somebody who's been through a lot of a lot of the things that a lot of you know yourself or different up and coming producers have when yeah, it comes to overseas as well, overseas as well, early success on YouTube, that YouTube success transferring over, um, you know, into placements. Then, you know, thinking about that more exclusive working with art artists, being in the studio with artists for the first time, coming yeah, yeah. from these. So it's it, it's really it's, it's, really it's cool. kind of the same road up. He's he's of course on a whole other level than me, but it's if, yeah, he's been through a lot of the same stuff, and that's where like he could kind of mentor me and just like I could go to him as look at him like as a mentor and just yeah, it's been it's been great so far. Insane, yeah, it's definitely insane to watch watch how far he, you, and that the whole collective has gone. Um, you know, you even spoke to. Thank you know, you. Lucy and some of the stuff that they that he's had, you know, he was obviously on the project with Enjoy Yourself too. So the whole squad's winning went big. Um, you know, everyone's going up. Uh you you had the pop smoke stuff and and that obviously came out um in the summer of 2020, but you definitely get, didn't stop getting to work there. Um as the year progresses, you're on the the Young Boy Top album, which actually just went platinum. What was, what was what was that so, like to, to go platinum on on young boy top what was that feeling like going platinum uh i mean that was crazy because i remember just uh getting the song with young boy because young boy is like one of my favorite artists like of all time so i just remember like the first time i i got the placement i was like so hyped and just yeah he's like he's one of my favorite artists of all time so like I'm really speechless at speechless at uh, at that point. So, yeah, being on a platinum album with him and just like yeah, I don't really know what to say. Just I'm just grateful for that. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. it was insane for sure. You obviously also just appeared on Sincerely Contrell, number one yeah. on Apple Music. Project just went number one in a in a really yeah, close Billboard, race. Yeah. yeah, in a really close race to CLB. Um, I know you worked with Cheese on that. Was yep. uh, was there any carryover between, you know, working on top and them working on that? Or were they two separate isolated uh, placements? Nah, I mean, yeah, there were two separate isolated placements, but they're all because of, you know, Jason off road. Mm -hmm. engineer. So shout out to him. Shout out uh, Jason. He's the, one, yeah, he's the one that placed the beats. Uh, but um, yeah, and shout out to him for for keep trust, trusting me and just like having me send beats because uh yeah, he's the one that got me the first placement, right? So, but now the process was the same. And I mean, this this album is kind of different because like, you know, he was in jail and uh, and uh, we made history because he was like uh, one of three, right? To ever uh, go number one behind bars, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. So that's uh, that's a pretty big, uh, yeah, that's, that's history right there. But I mean, that album is crazy too. And just like, I love Young Boy and... You know, there's a lot of good songs on there, so. Yeah, that album is crazy. The production on there is insane. You know, you, Jimmy, uh, obviously killed that one that you guys were on together. There's so many, so many on there. That yeah, there's so many guys. I'm going to miss, I'm going to miss people. If we start yeah, yeah, I don't want to say anybody because I'm, I'm going to miss somebody too, so. Yeah, but, yeah. But everybody so was on there. Everybody killed it. You guys went crazy. Uh, yeah, Jason brought in TNT to be a part of the process for a bunch of the songs. Yeah. TNT killed it as well as this he is, is the song the other guys. Yeah. yeah. TNT's going too crazy. He's an, he's another one of those guys who just watching from the early tight beat days to now is is insane. Um, but yeah, I you know like he's, he's he's like uh, mad underrated too, but I feel like the that's probably because he has like more songs than one big song. So yep. that's probably like people sleep on him, but he's like how many songs did he have on the album? Like yeah, I know. And I, that's the other thing too. He keeps having these moments where he's on these albums, but he's not posting like so and so produced by me. He's posting like I did tracks, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's fucked up. He's going crazy. He's going. Yeah. He's going too crazy. Um, 
but you know in the same way young boy drops sincerely control you make an appearance on there the same day you end up with one of the craziest oh, places about about that. Time. <laughs> about about it. About that. yeah joiner lucas and j cole what was it like yeah. you know how did it initially start so it starts as just a joiner lucas placement correct yeah so again from youtube from uh, youtube it's a beat with me and lc and and hagen and yeah me and lc have a lot of crazy beats on youtube so that beat that beat was like a beat with like a million views on youtube and i just uh remember that uh join us a manager hit me up and told me they wanted to buy the beat and uh and he was like so protective with saying what, cause he was like, this track is gonna be like his biggest track and this track is gonna be so crazy. And I was like, can you like, tell me just a little bit about who it is? And he was like, I can't really jinx it, man. We gotta wait till, and it, it was like four months. And then when they got the verse from him, they told, he told me it was cold. And I was like, I've never really been in shock over a placement, but like when I heard cold, when I saw cold, I was like, I was like, yeah. I didn't know what to say. I almost cried, Loki. I almost cried. Yeah, so insane. I feel like getting one with Cole at this point is so tough too, because he's been so locked in with the same guys for forever. He's dropping yeah. music. It's so almost. A, I mean, of course, it's a feature. It's not really a Cole song, but just that's really the only chance you got from getting, unless you're like Jetson made, right? right. Because he got one, but that's really the only chance you got, because you're not really gonna get a J Cole song j cole right so yeah i got so damn lucky insane sure I did. but it was destined it was destined yeah but that's said that's the that's the matter of it too you you spoke earlier ferno spoke to it too like you know when you have these moments and you just keep working super hard to you know capitalize on the momentum you have you know that that's when you get quote unquote lucky you know what i mean exactly yeah yeah. So you, you kind of feel like it's luck, but really the hard work just really paid off, right? So that's really what it is. Yeah, couldn't agree with that more. Um, you know, really, really cool that you did that with some of the loop makers that you've been working with since the beginning. Shout out LC, shout out Hagen. Both of them have had an insane so last two years. They've had an insane last two years. You you don't even see a project really at this point without Hagen or Elsie on there. And they both nope. went crazy. Um, but those are guys yeah, that, so happy that song was, I'm so happy that song was with uh, LC because we just yeah. had so many beats over the years on YouTube blowing up and we'd like, I feel like we kind of deserved the placement. So that, that was like the perfect story. Right. So, yeah, I definitely yeah. agree. What was, um, when you first, you, you locked in with them early and you guys have just stayed locked in. Like, what are some We've of the been things? For like two years, yeah. Me and LC. Yeah. I know Ferno talked about it too, but it's like sending a big mail to a bunch of producers that you've never been in touch with. That's kind of the same thing for me. You might be so fired, but if I don't recognize your name on my mail, I'm probably not gonna open it. And this is that's just how it is because I got my workflow, I got the people I work with, and it's gotten me so far to where I am now. So I'm I'm gonna keep working with the same people, right? So yeah, that's 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 just what it was like. I didn't mean it like that. It's just like uh, everybody got different people that they work with and just like getting out of my comfort zone to start working with somebody else and start checking loops that I don't normally check. And most of the time, uh, yeah, it's something that I've just heard before. Right. So. Yeah. And I think it's, it's important to just think about that when it comes to building with the people around you. Um, a lot of people want to, you know, just jump and start sending stuff to, to the biggest producer. But, you know, there was yeah. a point in time, I'm sure, when you and Elsie were working where neither one of you really had anything going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, For sure. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not the type of say that I'm a big producer. I, 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 I could never call myself like one of the biggest producers. But if somebody sees me as that, then, uh, yeah, that's probably not the way uh, to just start sending uh i know it's probably hard to get in contact with me but i try to like answer every dm honestly i answer so many people so yeah try to hit me up instead of just sending me mails honestly yeah because it, it sounds like you're definitely working with people who you have some sort of like you know friendship working relationship with yeah right? i'm like a very i'm like a very uh 
friendly person. I like to like learn, uh, like get to learn people and just like other than music, just like get in touch with them, right? So, uh, and I'm like, I'm not like arrogant. I don't like if you don't have a, a ten thousand followers, I'm not gonna work with you. That's not me at all. So, you know, I'm I'm open for anything as long as somebody's fired and I'm gonna work with them, right? So, and I've done that with a lot of people. You can just ask like a lot of people. I've done that. So, it's more about just not trying to gamble and just send a million mails out instead of like trying to hit me up. And I feel like it's not just me. A bunch of other producers gonna like feel like that's a better way to go yeah that's definitely some really really good advice to the up and coming you know loot makers or even just producers who are looking to collaborate with people who you know have yeah. a bit of a following and, and are accomplished um but yeah man we we appreciate it big time the producer room powered by producer culture um you know what's going on in the world outside of music in the world of palace you know a lot of people don't know the palace fun fact professional basketball player <laughs> We still gotta play the one on one. I'm not sure how that's how that's yeah, gonna he, go for you, but he keeps on saying, "How how how tall are you again?" So I'm, you know, what I'm saying I'm getting up there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Nah, nah, I got some moves, but uh, ain't nobody believing me. Like Kukup, he doesn't believe in me either, so he keeps. Kukup doesn't believe in me either. Yeah, so I guess I'm gonna just have to like go over there and like show you what it is. But it is what it is. We we'll take yeah. that at another time. But nah, I'm just chilling, man. Um. I just bought my my house like a half a year ago, and uh, I just uh, like been out here just chilling and like getting comfortable, and you know, just a lot of a lot of other stuff going on besides music. I try to like keep it in good balance, right, be, between both lives. So yeah, and I think that's that's really good. Uh, you know, just confirmation for people to hear that it's okay to do that. You know. Of course, yeah, man. You gotta like, cause if you work all the time and like work every day, you become. So you gotta like, remember that it's not all about working hard. You gotta get inspired too. You gotta like get motivated, and you gotta like remember that it's there's a life outside of all this as well. So you gotta like keep it ba- keep it balanced, right? Exactly. Yeah, and you definitely do a good job of doing that, and you know the success keeps coming. So. We appreciate it all. Um, hopefully, you. if you have any plans to come to the state soon, me, you, and Cookup, we're running the the, the game <laughs> twenty one. We do some NA up. On, uh, we do some NA up on the on the beach. Yeah, 